<laughs> no, no, it's not going to be that. You'll be like, Lord, I'll be like the disciples. I'll be the fell asleep in the garden. Amen. <laughs> Won't be able to watch and pray. Amen. But anyway, um, we're, we're going to start out. Brother Paul is about to come, and, and all three of us, we're going to deal with the topic of prayer. But we're going to deal with like three different aspects of prayer. Brother Paul's going to come. He's going to talk to us about the problem of prayer. And then Brother Randy's going to come. He's going to talk to us about the potential of prayer. And then I'll close it out. We're going to talk about the product of prayer. And, uh, and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. I didn't ask these gentlemen what scriptures or tell them anything. Just gave them the topic. And so whatever they have that God has laid upon their heart. So I'm going to ask you, let's just stand one more time. Ask God's blessings on his word as we endeavor to minister tonight as Brother Paul comes. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the songs. We thank you for the fellowship of the saints of God. We thank you for the privilege of being in your house tonight, most of all for this privilege of prayer that we may engage in. Lord, I ask you now to anoint, to minister each one of us that will be sharing the word tonight. Help it to penetrate our hearts and our lives. Lord, we pray most of all that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in all things, we'll give glory unto your name. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Before you're seated, turn around to your neighbor and tell them, I've been looking forward to three preachers all week. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Well, who gets the water? I guess I get the first sip, huh? <laughs> I get the first sip. No, uh, as long as I stay under Brother Perry and, and Brother George or Brother Randy, I'll be just, I'll be just fine. Um, as long as I don't go over them, I'll be fine. So, no, I've been asked to kick things off tonight as we begin our week of prayer, as Brother Perry just uh, alluded to. And uh, we're going to be talking about those three different toppings that I believe will be a blessing and uh, inspiration to you for this week, going into this week of prayer. And uh, again, just want to encourage you real quick. I know Sister Tyndall just announced it, Brother Perry, but one more time won't hurt um, that the sanctuary will be open from 7 to 7. I believe it will do you really good to come and uh, just come at some time at that point. And I told one of my friends, I said, um, they're going into their prayer week. And I said, we are too, from 7 to 7. We're going, we're not taking breaks, we're not eating lunch all week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And he's like, man, I'm like, no, I'm just joking. It's just to come as come and go, you know. But I was just, you know, just kind of messing with him about the 7 to 7 thing. Amen. So I'm going to be talking about uh, for a few minutes the problem of prayer. We're going to be looking at this topic. And I know that a lot of us, all of us that drive for sure can relate to this, that usually when we're in a hurry, typically, uh, we catch every red light. It seems like every light turns red. It's green. You're watching it green, and it doesn't even turn yellow. It just goes straight to red. You can't even run the light sometimes. It just feels like everything is just stopping you, and you're in a hurry. You're trying to go, or you're stuck behind somebody that drives like a turtle, or you're stuck behind somebody that's doing this and doing this, and you just can't, you just can't go. It seems like you're in a hurry. The person that's in front of you, they just want to enjoy the scenery, and they got their windows rolled down. They're just enjoying the breeze, and you just want to get around them and get out the, you know, just get out the way. I got somewhere to go. You're slowing me down. You're, you're hindering me. There's something that's stopping me from doing what I want to do. Or maybe you can even, maybe the train even decides to come. The train hardly comes, but all of a sudden the tracks, the train tracks come down. The, the train's coming. You have to wait. And so it is sometimes like that when we make up our mind that we're going to pray, especially when you decide, I'm going to pray, pray. I'm not talking about just five, ten minutes. I'm talking about I'm going to roll up my sleeves, and I have made up my mind that I'm going to pray about this situation, that I'm going to pray. The Bible says to pray without ceasing, and I know a lot of us do that. We pray while we're driving. We pray while we're at the gas station, pray while we're at the store, you know, picking up groceries, constantly praying. But, again, the, the prayer that I'm talking about today, the problem of prayer here is that, that prayer that specifically, God, I'm going to stand in a gap for somebody. Or, God, I have a need, and there's something that I need to meet with you about. And you better rest assured that when you make up your mind that you are going to pray like this, that that devil is going to be there to try and hinder you from doing that. 
Just like the cell phone that's listening to you constantly about what you're going to buy, what you're thinking about buying, the devil's out there with his minions listening for that little key word that somebody says, I think I'm going to pray. I think I'm going to pray about this situation. You know what? I think tomorrow I'm going to get up and go to the prayer meeting. You know what? I think I'm going to get off of work early to go into the prayer closet and spend time with God. I feel led to go and spend some time with God. I think I want to shut my phone off. They're listening for that little key word and watching the determination of a person that says, this is what I'm about to do. So get ready. This week that's coming, get ready. Because there's going to be something that's going to try and stop you from coming one day this week. Even if it's one day that you made up your mind to come, there's going to be something that's going to be there to stop you. Real quick, we're going to look at Matthew 26, chapter 36 and 44, uh, chapter, the verse 36 through 44. And this is Jesus, very familiar portion of scripture. It says, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, we heard about nevertheless this morning. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them. And went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Saying the same words. What did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. When you pray, when you make up your mind that you're going to pray, you have to make up your mind that you're going to watch. That you're going to watch. What are you talking about, Brother Paul? That you're going to stay focused on the objective. Focus on why you're there to pray. Focus on what the reason is that you're going to be there to meet with the Lord. What is the objective? Watch and pray. Watch like a nurse or like a doctor watches a sick person. They're constantly monitoring. They're constantly watching. He's talking about watching like a guard that is watching what they're guarding. Like a guard that's standing outside of a gate, guarding in case there's an intruder, in case there's a thief or danger. He's talking about that kind of watch. To watch, when he says watch and pray, is to imply that you're not going to be distracted by other things. It's to imply that I'll, I'll, I'll not get distracted by this or that. It means that you're going to be expecting enemies to approach or be ready for some sort of disturbance. That's what watching means. You're, you're watching for the enemy. You're watching or expecting something to try and deter you from praying, something to try and deter you that you've made up your mind and I'm going to go and I'm going to pray. That's what it means. You're watching. And so by watching, if I know that I'm going to pray early in the morning, all right, I know. There's a prayer meeting, 5, 6 in the morning, whatever. I know I want to be there. The Spirit says I want to be there. Then the best thing for me to do is to go to bed early if I can help it. That way in the morning I can wake up, be rested up, and ready to pray. Instead of being tired and falling asleep or, or, or miss the alarm. I'm watching. You understand? I'm watching. I'm paying attention. On my way to church or prayer meeting, I'm not going to be playing country music on the radio. And then all of a sudden I'm praying and some song lyric that's got nothing to do with Jesus pops up. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pray for my family. I'm trying to pray for lost loved ones or this and that. And all of a sudden some country song just pops up out of nowhere. It'll happen. I'm watching. But I'm watching. I got to watch. I know what I'm about to do. I know this is serious business. I know what's about to take place. I'm watching. I'm being careful. I'm being watchful. I would name a country song, but it'll probably pop up in your head tonight while we pray, so I won't do that. <laughs> and by the way, I don't listen to country. My boss that I used to work for, he used to listen to all that all the time, and it just gets stuck in you, but um, that's, that's the size of point. But I'm talking about the problem of prayer. What happens when you make up your mind 
the prayer. Watching, I'm talking about watching for things that I can control. I can control these things. I can control what I watch or what I listen to before I go to the prayer meeting, before I go to church. I can control that. I can't control what's playing at the store, but I can control what's playing in my TV. I can control what's playing in my vehicle and on the way to church. Things that I'm in control, things for me to watch for. If I'm going to pray, it's a prayer week. We know it's a prayer week. It's probably in my best interest not to try, and this is for the younger people, I guess, not to try and binge watch a whole season of something. Season one or season two, you know what, I think it's a good, I know it's prayer week, but let me just watch this season one or season two. Why? Because after that, I may be praying and I'm thinking, man, I wonder if season three's coming out. Huh? Or be thinking about the episode. Man, that sure was a twist. You know, I'm praying, I'm trying to, to press through, and all of a sudden it comes to my mind. Man, that main character, I wish they would have killed him off or whatever the thing is, you know. I mean, it happens. It happens. It's talking about watching and praying. When you watch, you're examining things. Points of attack, weaknesses in the armor, weaknesses in, 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 the, in the fort or whatever. You're watching, you're making sure we need, to, we need to beef this up or we need to do something about it. Again, if I'm tired the next day, I won't want to wake up. The song will pop up. You're out of nowhere. You want to Google uh, season three of an episode. You know, you get up. That's why it's best to put the phone up. That's why it's best to set that time apart when you make up your mind to pray. Because when you're praying and the phone's gone, then you can just write it down and just think about it later. Because if not, so-and-so's birthday's party's tomorrow. It's on Facebook. Oh, let me check Facebook real quick. Next thing you know, it's been an hour, and you're checking out what drama's going on on Facebook. Next thing you know, oh, it's time to go. I, I, or I'm sorry, Lord. I got to go. I didn't have time to pray. But what happened? The distraction came. You weren't watching. That's what he's talking about. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. I'm almost done. I'm talking about the problem of prayer. All these scenarios could be avoided. If I would have watched for him, if I would have watched for him, I could have avoided these things because I can control these things. The spirit indeed is, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's what Jesus said. That's Jesus' words. That was what he told his disciples. Again, it's better to bring a notebook or something where you just jot down a quick note and just look at it later. Oh, you got to email so-and-so, okay? Just write it down, put it off, and then when you're done praying, when you're done pressing through, then go back through your list and go check your list out. Our spirit is like a bird that, is, that was tied up by a string, and the little boy had the, had the bird by the string, and the bird's flapping. It's trying to get away, but it couldn't get away because the other side of the string was tied to a rock. Well, that's our spirit. Our spirit is trying to soar and fly, but our flesh is that rock that's keeping it down from doing what God wants it to do. And that's what we have to watch for. The spirit this morning may have challenged a lot of people to come back tonight or maybe to be a part of the service this week. But the flesh says, oh, no, you're tired. You got to take a little break. You got to take a little rest. You're too tired. Or you know what kind of week you're going to have this week, right? Going to be a busy week. Maybe next year. Next year we'll make it. You, you know what, Siri, make myself a note that next year I'm going to make the prayer meeting because I'm not going to do it this week, huh? I mean, it'll happen. That's how it works. I'm telling you, you laugh because you know it's true. Don't listen to this flesh. Don't feed this flesh. Don't take the suggestion that this, fle this, this flesh makes, this, this, this flesh in here. You make this thing submit and you say, no, I'm going to crucify you. I'm going to go to prayer because there's nothing more important, no one more important than what I'm about to do at that altar. There's nobody I need to talk to that's more important on the phone or somewhere else than the person that I'm going to meet with at the altar. They can't fix my need. They can't meet, meet my need. They can't do anything. But the one I'm about to meet with, they can do it. It's amazing. You want to pray, you start noticing the cobwebs on your ceiling. You start noticing that the house is dusty. And, man, I better get up and dust. It's amazing the things you start noticing when you want to pray. But you tell this flesh, I don't care, flesh, how many cobwebs there are, how dusty it is. After I'm done praying, then I'm going to get up and dust it. Probably not going to happen, but at least I'm not going to get up right then and there because I'm here for one reason, and that's to pray. That's to pray. I'm talking about the problem of prayer. Don't help the problem by setting yourself up. Be watchful. When you watch, I'll close with this. When you watch... When you watch, like we talked about, you do your part, and when you pray, God does his part. 
when you watch, you're doing your part. And when you pray, God's going to do his part. And when those two things come together, the devil knows that that's going to be an unstoppable force. Amen. I hope you were blessed today. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Randy as he comes and shares another point. Come home from work, the work a day world, and <clears throat> you park there, you're in trouble. Amen. But uh, we're going to change directions a little bit, still dealing with prayer uh, tonight, but I want to deal with the potential of prayer, the potential of prayer. We're here tonight, many of us, because someone prayed, and they knew the potential in prayer. Amen. Those old timers, they knew that if they prayed, things would change, things would happen. Amen. God would get a hold of lives and uh, deliverance would come and salvation would come. And, and amen. They knew the potential of prayer. I looked that word up in, the, in Webster's Dictionary, the word potential. It means existing in possibility. Amen. How many of those things are possible when we pray? Amen. Uh, all things are possible. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Amen. So potential is existing in the possibility. The, also a definition is capable of becoming actual or real. Amen. That's a, possi that's a possibility. Amen. I thought about this thought. You know, when a college coach comes to a high school to recruit a high school athlete, uh, when he comes to that high school and he, he's, that athlete has got his attention uh, somewhere on film or something and he sees that, uh, running back or that receiver, whatever the case, he comes to that high school and uh, he knows the possibility that that athlete has, amen, and he knows with a little extra training, a little uh, training on him on how to uh, do a certain technique that there's possibility that that athlete can benefit uh, their college team. So he comes and he recruits, and I was thinking about that. When we see the, possi uh, the potential of prayer, Amen. We'll see the potential that it will get us closer to God. Just like that athlete will uh, benefit that team. Amen. The potential in prayer will benefit you and I once we <clears throat> tap in, amen, to God. Amen. There's potential in that. It will build our faith. Amen. We know that all things are possible. Amen. To those that believe like, <clears throat> like Jesus said in the book of Mark. But I uh, I want to turn to the book of Psalms. I've got, I told Brother Paul he had just a few verses of Scripture, and Brother Perry, I think, has got, I don't know exactly how many he's got. i got a whole chapter here. Amen. Well, i got to watch the clock, so don't, don't worry. Amen. Don't fret yourself uh, too bad. But I want to look at, in, in the book of Psalms, we see, amen, a group of people, the Israelites, and we see some things that they were going through, and I believe the things that they were going through, many of us, sitting here tonight are going through some of the same things in our lives. Amen. I, I was also thinking when I was thinking about prayer, <clears throat> there's been so many things for us to pray for. Amen. So much sickness going on in the world today and so much death going on. And, and, and uh, I've never had so many people, it doesn't seem like I have, uh, that's been dealing with cancer to pray for as I do now. Amen. Sometimes uh, I'll get down to pray and uh, you know, I know I've got to pray for this one and that one and that one and then get up and uh, I miss one. But uh, how many knows when you miss that one, uh, that name comes to you, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Amen. You just call out their name in prayer. Amen. doesn't matter if you're driving down the road. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about Brother Paul was talking about uh, people getting in your way. I told Brother Perry, I said, well, <clears throat> some folks may be working by the hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You get behind me. <clears throat> During the day and I'm working by the hour, you're in trouble if you're in a hurry. I can tell you that. Amen. That's all I got to say. Amen. The book of Psalms 107, just going to hit the high, high points here. In verse number 4, the Bible says that they wandered. Amen. They wandered in the wilderness uh, in, in a solitary way. How many has been there? It just seems like you're just going through life. Amen. Just doing life and things are happening. Uh, don't really have any direction. Uh, I don't know, but as they were wondering, the Bible says in verse 6, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. 
and he delivered them out of their distresses. And verse 7 says this, and he led them forth in the right way. When we're wandering through life and we don't know which way to go, just cry out to God. There's possibility, there, there's potential in prayer. Amen. That if we get a hold of God, he'll lead us in the right way. He knows the way to go, church. Amen. He knows what the way that we and I need to go. And he led them forth. I like the what he says in the right way. He didn't lead them in the wrong way. Amen. He led them in the way that they need to go. When you're looking for direction of life and when you're wandering through this life. Life, uh, look and cry out to God. There is potential in prayer, and the one that you're praying to, uh, amen, will lead us forth in the right way. Hallelujah. Amen. The next thing in verse number 10, the Bible says uh, that they were bound. He says, Such as set in darkness uh, in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Uh, Amen. And many of uh, us tonight, uh, amen, the devil would like to do nothing more than to have you and I bound. Uh, bound with so much stuff that we can't pray. Uh, amen. Bound up with the troubles of life. Bound up with sickness uh, and all of these things that come along with life. Uh, amen. But what did they do when they found themselves? But they even say, it says uh, in verse number 12, I know I didn't give Mike this. It says there was none to help, nobody there to help. How many has ever felt that way? Uh, you felt like you were bound, tied up, uh, and there was nobody, amen, that could come to your rescue. Nobody uh, that could help you. Uh, but what did they do? Verse 13 says they cried unto the Lord in their troubles, uh, and he saved them out of their distresses. Uh, Amen. And what happened then? Verse number 14 says, uh, amen, that he uh, break the bands that in sunder. He tore the bands apart. Uh, amen. There is potential in prayer uh, that when those are bound uh, with sin or whatever it is, uh, amen, there's potential that they can be, that the things that has them bound can be broken uh, Asunder, Amen. I, I think back to almost uh, over 15 years ago when the Lord dealt with me, uh, Amen, about addiction and about those that uh, was addicted. I knew, Amen, that they could be that the chains could be broken, uh, Amen, to those that were bound. And I knew uh, that there was potential in prayer, uh, and that if someone prayed, uh, the chains would break. Hallelujah. So we see, uh, amen, that when we cry out to God, things happen. Why? Because there's potential, uh, amen, there's potential of, those, uh, of the, the ex existing impossibility. Uh, amen. The Bible says in verse number 17 uh, that they were afflicted. Uh, amen. <clears throat> it says, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Now notice that. They were afflicted because of their own uh, transgressions. Uh, but what did they do? Again, uh, verse 19, they cried and to the Lord in the trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. And the Bible says that word afflicted means a sickness. In verse 20, he says, and he sent his word, hallelujah, and he healed them. Amen. Amen. There's potential when we call out to God that the need's going to be met. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Amen. We serve a God that meets the need. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, if we didn't believe that, we might as well sit down and shut up. Uh, amen. But I know uh, in whom I have believed, and I know, uh, amen, that he's able to meet our needs. Uh, amen. Lastly, and I'm almost finished. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. <clears throat> amen. Putting the pressure on the pastor. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. <clears throat> amen. Not really. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of pressure we put on him anyway. Amen. Verse number 25 says, amen, they were in a storm. It, says, it talks about stormy wind, amen, and, and waves that are lifted up. How many has been there? Amen. The storms of life comes, amen, one right after another, just like the waves on the seaside. You can stand there in the Gulf of Mexico. That wave comes one right after another. Amen. There's very few days out of the year that it's like glass and there's no waves. But if you stand on that seashore, you'll see that there's wave after wave. That beach is constantly changing. Amen. That beach that you see down there in the Gulf of Mexico is constantly changing. That The sands are going in and going out. Well, 
uh, our life is that way sometimes. Uh, amen. We're bombarded on this side. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a wave on this side. Uh, amen. And it seems uh, the Bible even says they reeled to and fro and staggered like drunk men. Uh, amen. And they're at wit's end. They were there. Uh, amen. We've been there. Every one of us in this room tonight. Uh, amen. We've reeled to and fro. Uh, amen. And we staggered like drunk men. Uh, amen. But all of a sudden, uh, amen. What do we do? We cry out to God. Uh, in verse 13. 28 again they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses and notice this in verse 29 and maketh the storm a calm and the waves thereof a still hallelujah what did he do he came and he calmed the troubled waters praise God amen you look at that in, in chapter 107 of Psalms over and over again they knew that there was potential why because I see them crying out to God over and over again. What are we going to do? Amen. Church, when we need guidance, when we need direction, when we need deliverance, we need healing, and we need the storms of life to be calm, we cry out to God. Amen. His ear is not dull that he cannot hear. Amen. His hand is not short that he can't reach down and meet our need. Hallelujah. So there's potential tonight. Amen. In prayer. Amen, and I know tonight in this house, amen, that there's many needs that we need. Amen, hallelujah. Whew, I'm telling you, my year, just share this with you right quick, hadn't started off real good. Amen, turned 60 in December, I, I, well, Brother Tim here, amen, turned 60, it's been downhill. When I turned 40, they told me it won't get no better. But I tell you what, when I turned 60, I didn't know it was going to get this bad. Amen. But all of a sudden, I think about those that's worse off than I am. Amen. My hot water heater started leaking, ruined my floor. Amen. Me and my wife both got COVID. Amen. She's at home with vertigo now. You're talking about somebody needing prayer. Amen. I've been needing prayer. Amen. But I know that there's potential. Amen. And that's why we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. It got me scared of getting another birthday or two around here. Amen. Praise God. We know the problem of prayer, and it's not on prayer's end, it's on our end. Amen. Because this flesh does not like to pray. It likes to play. Amen. Not pray. And then also, thank you, Brother Randy, for those timely words on the potential of prayer. All things, he said, are possible to them that believe. Amen. But you can't believe without prayer. It's like you can't have a heartbeat without oxygen. Hello. You can have the best heart in the world, not have any arteries blocked, anything like that. But if there's no oxygen getting into that blood, if there's no oxygen coming into your lungs, guess what? That heart's not going to do you any good. Amen. And so prayer is the oxygen. Amen. It is what makes everything else work. Praise God. So tonight, very briefly, <clears throat> as they have done so adequate and a fine job in their time management and, and uh, sharing with us, I want to talk tonight for just a few minutes on the product of prayer. Now, when I say the product of prayer, I'm not talking about the answers that you get from prayer. Amen. I'm not talking about that at all. We understand that prayer affects the prayer and the prayee, okay? Any prayer uttered in sincerity from a pure heart is going to find the ear of God, amen? And God will answer that prayer as we talked in Sunday school this morning. It may not be the answer you want, but God will answer that prayer. And so prayer we can, prayer changes things. We hear that all the time. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes people. But I believe that prayer affects the prayer the most. Amen. The one doing the praying. Amen. It changes you. Husband, your wife ever tell you, you need to pray. I've heard that. Y'all ever heard that? I've heard that. Yeah. You need to pray. You need to go pray. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, amen. But um, 
You know why? Because they were like, prayer's going to change your attitude. Prayer's going to change something X, Y, Z about you. Prayer changes the person that's praying. It changes your form. Notice, notice what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. He's concerning here Christian conduct, our spiritual walk. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I submit to you tonight that the only way those verses can become a reality in our life is through prayer. Amen. You will not achieve that without prayer. There's no way. You can't do this. These verses cannot be formed in us in a prayerless life, in a careless life. But prayer has to be a deliberate action. Amen. The only way that we can please God is by engaging in conversation with him and walking with him. We know the benefits of prayer are many, not for those that we pray for. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about us. What does that prayer do? What does consistent prayer do? First of all, it teaches us a discipline of spirit, soul, and body. Prayer is discipline. You got to make, Brother Paul talked about it. The problem of prayer. This, this nature of ours is bent to not pray instead of pray. And so prayer, amen, discipline through prayer, you have to pray. Paul said, I keep myself under subjection. How did he do that? He done that through prayer. He had to pray, amen. If you don't pray, you will stray. Brother Romeg says it all the time. Pray and you'll stay. Fast and you'll last. Amen. And so you hang in there. You stay with God and you bring discipline to yourself. That's what Jesus, he was aggravated with those guys in the garden. He come back and found them asleep. Why? They had no discipline. They had no prayer life because they had no discipline. And so prayer teaches us to deny the flesh to pray when we want to play or to stray. It teaches us discipline that we become dedicated to God and we seek God's will and not our own. It brings a posture. Not only does it bring discipline to our lives, but prayer brings a posture. You know, I, I preached before, posture is very important. You can tell a lot by posture. If somebody's talking to you and their feet are pointed away from you, that is a subconscious way of them saying, I'm ready to move on. Amen. You might have my eyes, but you don't have my heart. And as soon as I can see a way out, I'm going out of this conversation. Amen. Posture says a lot of things. There are defensive posture. There's attentive posture. And so when we subject ourselves to the, man, I'm trying to hurry. I'm running out of breath here. Stay with you guys. When, when, when we submit ourselves to the discipline of prayer, it changes our posture. Did your mom ever tell you, stand up straight. Hold your shoulders back. Look people in the eye. They're developing posture in you. Because people judge you. You don't mean old slumpy, shaggy, slouchy, something walking around like this, scruffing your feet along the whole time. Pick them up. Have some posture about you. The same way is true spiritually. Our posture is bent towards God. Amen. You can tell a military man that's been in the military, there's, even after they've been out for years and years, they still have certain habits that are part of that. Amen. And girls, they say military men make good husbands because they're used to taking orders. But anyway, I don't know. And so they are there that is so ingrained within them it's part of their posture and so when we discipline ourselves to prayer it creates a posture that is attentive towards God a posture that looks to God a posture that stands ready to serve God 
That way, the only way you can let this mind be in you, which is in Christ, is through prayer. The only way you're going to have that prayer is through discipline. And so it affects our spiritual posture. When we don't pray like we should, our spiritual posture suffers. As a pastor, I can tell when people's spiritual posture starts changing. They may sit in the same seat. They may sing the same songs, clap the same way. But you can tell. You can shake hands with somebody. I shook hands with somebody the other day that comes to this church sometimes. Sometimes every service, sometimes not. But anyway, it matters not. But I told my wife, I said, I sensed something when I shook their hand. Made me a cause for prayer for them. Because I sensed something in their spirit. Their spiritual posture was different. Was different. It could be bent over from the loads. It could be haughtiness from a, a proud spirit. It could be a, a sneaky posture from hiding something. There's all different kinds of things. But see, prayer puts us in that posture towards God. And lastly, lastly, it brings us into intimacy. Come on, Sister Bethany, get ready to play. Prayer brings us into intimacy with God. What is prayer? Prayer is simply you talking to God and God talking to you. That's what it is. You, you, you don't have to know Greek. You don't have to know Hebrew. All you, if, if all you know is ain't, can't, mater, and tater, God's not an English professor. He's looking for pure hearts. He's looking for sincerity. He's looking for somebody that will call upon him. He said, if you call upon me, I will be found of you. I will hear you. And so prayer brings us into intimacy with God. Oh, there's times like last Sunday morning when it seemed like heaven kissed the earth and we were right in the middle of the smack in this sanctuary. The power of God was so present. But that's different from the intimacy of God. The power of God can be present and heal you and do mighty and supernatural things. But when you move into that realm of intimacy with God, there's a tenderness there. There's a love there. There's a warmth there. There's a preciousness there that most of the time may make you weep, tremble. You really don't know how to react. All you know is that in the presence of Jehovah, in the presence of God Almighty, there is intimacy. There's kindredship. There is that relationship. And you enter into that. And, and music can help us and ministry can help us and, and all of those other helps. But there's nothing like that heart that has been conditioned by a prayerful walk. That has been conditioned to seek God. That knows God. I read the story one time during the war that a sentry, his CO come along and this guy had a very important post out there. He was the night guard and sentry to watch out for the enemy. And his commander came along and he found him, knelt down. He accused him of being asleep. The guy tried to tell him, sir, I wasn't asleep. I'm a Christian, and I was just praying out here in the woods at night by myself. His, his CO didn't believe that, so he hauled him in before the next guy up to be court-martialed because that was a, an offense punishable by death, to be asleep on duty, to be asleep on guard duty. All the people's lives in that camp is dependent on you doing your job. And so he hauled him in before that superior officer for the court martial. And the superior officer said, well, son, what do you have to say for yourself? He said, sir, I was not asleep. He said, what were you doing? He said, sir, I was praying. 
He said, praying? He said, yes, sir. He said, are you a Christian? He said, yes, sir, I am. He said, are you in the habit of praying daily? He said, yes, sir, I am. He said, fall down on your knees and pray. I want to hear you pray. He said, that young man immediately hid his knees and began to pray and call on God. He's probably saying, Lord, help me not to die, Jesus. <laughs> help me not to be court-martialed. But he began to pray. Didn't record what his words were. And he said he hadn't prayed in the morning two or three minutes before that superior officer said, stop. He said, get up. He looked at the boy's CO. He said, this boy's free to go. He said, that boy wasn't sleeping. He said, that boy was praying. He said, because there ain't no man can pray like that unless he's in the habit of praying. And if he said he was praying, he was praying because he's got the goods. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is that intimacy that comes, that relationship. You don't have to know Greek and Hebrew and pronounce all and be real deep and formal and all of that and all that stuff. God's not in all that necessarily. But he is in the cry of his children. Whether you make words or not, you can pray in your spirit. That's how Samuel got in this world because his mama prayed and she made no sounds but her lips moved so much the old prophet thought she was drunk. She said, I'm not drunk. I'm under such a burden. She found intimacy and in that intimacy she got more than she ever dreamed. So tonight, what are we going to say? Tonight, we're going to start out right where we are, moving into the presence of God. And this old song that is so powerful, it simply says, in the presence of Jehovah. Would you sing it with Sister Bethany as she leads us? And let's just enter into the presence of Jehovah right where you